as our Savior and our Redeemer and our Lord. Yes. Father, we come expecting to receive from you. Yes. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, we challenge strongholds that have entered into our lives through hurts, wounds, and offenses. Yes, yes, yes. Lord God, I give you praise and glory for balance in the teaching that we will be teaching. Yes, yes, yes. But Father God, let the insight and the wisdom that you're giving us, Father God, bring strong deliverance. Yes. Now, Father, we didn't come here, Lord God, to look to man. Because we know by wisdom to never expect from man yes. what only we can get from God. Yes. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for being our healer, yes. our redeemer. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, for the blood of Jesus. Yes. That's right. Yes. Folks, I like to talk about the cleansing blood, yes. the healing blood, the washing yes. blood, the sanctifying blood. Yes. We give you honor and praise. You. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Apostle Willie Topper, we thank God for being in the house. Amen. First lady, woman of God, we thank God for being here. Amen. I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of 3 John. 3 John. And we're going to look at verse 1 and 2. Now what I'm going to be talking about tonight, and then God will be demonstrating. Uh-huh. And notice I said I'm going to be talking about tonight, and then God yes. will be demonstrating, amen, healing and deliverance in areas of infirmity that are directly tied to emotional strongholds. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Now, I, I will say this for the sake of history. Amen. In this chapter when uh, he was speaking to Gaius, Amen. He was actually telling him that when he said about, I wished above all things that thou mayest prosper me in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Uh, the point that he was making was not just healing. It was a salutation and a greeting. Uh -huh. Everybody got that? That's where it principally was. But we know, amen, that in that salutation and greeting is a powerful insight. And hear what he said in 3 John, verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper yes. and be in health, Come on. even as thy soul prospers. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to tie that with a scripture that I read, I think in Psalm 139. Mm -hmm. And what not, it talks about uh, it talks about how that God, uh, my soul, knoweth right well that I am wondrously and gloriously made, yeah. Yeah. and that my soul knoweth right well. Mm -hmm. There is an attack that comes upon our bodies through the emotions, mm -hmm. through the mind, through the will. Somebody say through the mind, through the, mind. Through the, will, through the will, and the emotions. And the emotions. Now we're going to go to Psalm 103. And I'm going to do what, what I call quick examples, and there's a reason why. Say these words with me. Not, Not always, always the case. case. If you've ever heard someone teach on the ministry of deliverance, and when they teach, they always say, well, you do this, you're going to get a demon. You do that, you're going to get a demon. You do this, you're going to get a demon. What happens is after a while, it becomes unbalanced. Why? Because they're saying every time this happens... Yeah. This is going to happen, and it's not the truth. Right. Now, let me tell you what's all, what is the truth. What God calls sin is sin all day long. All day. Yes. All day. Somebody say, ain't no ifs, no buts, or anything about that. Amen? Now, the, the, now here what we're going to talk about. Number one, listen to this. The first entrance of strongholds in our life that the enemy has used is unforgiveness. Uh -huh. That's right. Not that? Now you want to start getting some healing. And by the way, while you're writing in your notes and tapping in your iPads, every time someone needs a healing in the area of their body, does not mean they have sinned. That's right, right, right. right. That's right. One time there was a man that was born blind, and the disciples, which the Jewish people evidently believed in generational strongholds. Uh-huh. Now, to some folks, somebody, well, I don't believe in generational curse. I just don't believe it. Well, why are you running around repenting of the sin that Adam opened the door to there? All right. And Adam's fall, we sinned all. All right. But 
what he had to tell the disciples was that neither, neither, neither has his parents sinned, nor this man have sinned, but that the glory of God might be made manifest. Now what was God's glory? God's glory was to manifest himself as the healer, the Lord that healeth thee, or healeth him. Everybody got that? But what I will stop and talk about right now, amen, is the beginning of dealing with strongholds of infirmity. We that are sick have to carefully examine our life to make sure the enemy is not using a stronghold of unforgiveness, bitterness, retaliation yes. to lock the infirmity in. Yes. Okay? Let's read word first and then I'll give you some examples. Uh-huh. This is what it says in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Somebody say all his benefits. All his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine what? Iniquity. Iniquity. And who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. And who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Yeah. And I'm going back up to verse 3. Say it with me. Who forgiveth, who forgiveth all, all thine iniquities. Thine iniquities. First there was the forgiveness of iniquity. Amen. Then the healing of thy diseases. Uh -huh. Some years ago we were in Delaware and there was a young man. He had a stronghold that pulled his leg and it was literally twisting it. Mm -hmm. The pain was excruciating. I'm going somewhere. Listen to me. Yeah. And so when I went to pray for him, first of all, I wasn't looking for a demon. I was praying for God to heal it. But in my understanding and in my teaching, I was well aware that the Holy Ghost would speak to me and say, it's the devil, cast him out. Or the Holy Ghost can say, it's an area that just needs to be healed, then heal it. Yes. Now, if I tried to cast out something that just needed to be healed, yes. wouldn't happen. All right, all right. And if I tried to just heal something and refusing to acknowledge that there are demons that need to be cast out, mm -hmm. wouldn't happen. All right. So the moral of that story is we need to just be open to the way God wants to use yeah. things. You're not going to find me. I'm one of them guys. I ain't going to be sitting around here playing with you. Can a Christian have a demon? Can a demon affect the Christian? While we're all running around here asking God to heal Christians, who are bound, asking God to set folk free. Bottom line is, Christians are not demon possessed. Right. Can't happen. This my spirit man is where the Holy Ghost dwells. Right. But Christians can be bound to a lesser or a greater degree in the mind, will, and emotions, and also by infirmities in our bodies. Right. And that's not open to debate. Right. It's just a fact of life. Mm. Got that? Now, so as I am praying with this young man. I'm not going there looking for no demon. Uh -huh. I'm looking for him to get a breakthrough. Uh -huh. I said in the name of Jesus. And he said, this thing was hurting him. He said, oh, my hip, my hip. He said, Pastor, I bring my hip. And I go down there and as I lay my hands to pray for him, the Holy Ghost says, the spirit of infirmity attacking that joint is locked in by unforgiveness towards his father. Mm. And everybody say, not always, always the case. Okay. So, I said in the name of Jesus Christ, and watch this pastor, I said in the name of Jesus Christ, I said, I bind these spirits from causing this pain in your leg now. And when I did, it stopped cold turkey. I said, whoa. And then all of a sudden, I said, in the name of Jesus, son, look at me. I said, did you see what just happened? He said, it feels better. I said, son, the Lord gave me a word for you. Now, people like to get a word. Whether you're going to get a refrigerator, a new car, couch, sofa. No, I'm not against the prophetic word. But what I am against is us trying to uh, navigate God into what we want. So anyway, watch this, Pastor. I said to him, son, I said, I'm praying for your healing. And this and that demon that was in that spirit of infirmity that was operating on for Now listen, he had hurt himself naturally. Uh -huh. Sometimes you have two things operating. Right. A natural uh, wound. A natural uh, a natural inner in 
Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A natural infirmity. A natural injury. Right, right. That spirits try to capitalize on. In his case, this demon capitalized on the area of the energy, injury, and began to bind him. When I tried to pray for the young man's healing, it would not break. I said, son, look at me. God told me to tell you that he would heal you if you let go the anger towards your father. He looked at me. I said, I said, let me show you what I mean. He looked at me. First he went, what you mean? Now he's still holding his leg and the pain is just subsided. The anointing that was on this uh, commanding authority we had was able to bind it. Right, right. I said, son, watch this. In Jesus' name, I loose it now. I was, he said, ow! Oh, oh, oh. I said, I bind it. I said, do you see what just happened? He said, yeah. He said, when you, when you loosed it, it came back up and pulled my leg. He said, Pastor Ivory, I felt that thing pull my leg. I said, look at me, son. His father was sitting right next to him like you were. Son was sitting on the end like she was. I said, son, I said, whatever it is with the issue with you and your father, you need to let it go, son. God wants to heal you. Now, what strongholds do is they take legal right. Yeah. Now, they don't just wake up, yawn, and go, oh, I think I'll jump on him. <laughs> yes. They need a legal open gateway, a door in order to attack. The door in this young man's life was his hatred for his father was so strong that when the injury took place, the demon would not leave because of unforgiveness. Got it? So I said to him, I said, son, look at me. I said, I can pray for you and you can get the healing and I can even move this demon out, but I need you to work with me. I said, I need you to help me. Now, often people will, like ourselves, will come for prayer, come for ministry, and, and we give you instruction to try to help you. Somebody in here tonight that's hearing my voice, you have such hurt, anger, and bitterness, and unforgiveness towards who wounded you, that you don't realize your health is being captured by that stronghold. All right. Got it? And guess what? The sooner you turn them over to God, and here goes how you do it. Lord, can I mess with you, Apostle? Respectfully. You can say that. Lord, I can't stand Willie. God, he hurt my feelings five years ago, embarrassed me in front of everybody when he used to be my pastor, and that talker can't tell me nothing. Well, Lord, I'm having a hard time letting it go. And I've been talking about him, God. And I know, it don't, I know vengeance is yours. But right now, God, where I'm at, I ain't even worried about what you're going to do to him. God, help my heart because I can't let my bitterness toward Willie Talbert. I can't let my anger toward... Help me, please, because I'm going so deep that I don't know how to help myself. Somebody say, come on, come clean. Don't walk around here, amen, look at all sweet and nice and all, all anointed, amen, but won't deal with your issue. I, had to, I have to ask God to help me to release what I feel towards him because it's been dug in so long I don't know how to do it by myself. I don't have the power by my own self to break this alone. That's right. Tobias said, call it what it is. So I have to say to God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help. I welcome the Holy Spirit. Because here was the problem. Let me tell you, a Christian. The problem is, while we are holding unforgiveness and bitterness in our life, we are not welcoming the Holy Spirit into that area of our life. That's right, right. right. That's right. Now, we talk all this stuff about, I want to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah, but what division are you keeping for yourself? Oh, oh Lord Jesus. Now you welcome him into your life to feel the anointing of praise. You welcome him into your life, preacher, to preach the sermon. Mother, you welcome him into your life because you're a prayer warrior. But do you hate your daughter-in-law? Do you carry bitterness towards your baby and daddy? Somebody hear me talk. Look, I got quiet and up in here. Is you carried it so hard and so long until you don't even realize it's affecting your health. It's affecting your life. It's affecting you. Why? Because whatever can get into the emotions and get into the soul has the capability of getting into the bone and the marrow. Mm. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Is anybody hearing this? Yes. 
Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. I want to show you something. Amen. Pastors that are in here, you're going to hear a lot of word real quick. Mm -hmm. Got that? Hebrews chapter 4. Got that? Now listen to this. Verse 12. When you get it, say amen. Amen. Now, now, if the word of God is quick and powerful, that it goes down to the bone and marrow, guess whose other words go down to? Uh, Some of your own. Wow. Death and life truly is in. Wow. The power of the tongue. Say it, say it. The power of hate and unforgiveness needs the energy of the soul that burns the body through the emotions. Say it. I'm losing some people. Okay, let me keep on preaching here. Uh -huh. Listen to what it says. For the word of God is quick and is powerful uh -huh. and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh -huh. Piercing even and the dividing asunder of what? Soul and spirit. How, what does the word do? It divides asunder what? The soulless flesh and also the spiritual things. And it even, got, listen to this, it even goes down to the joints uh -huh. and the marrow. And as a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Now show me in that verse what part of the body that is not, not, not examined. Mm. Every factor of the body, of our physical body, is shown in that verse. Is anybody getting this? Yes, so what the enemy does with the hatred that I got towards uh, Apostle Talbert because of what happened four or five years ago when I was his church member, it has me carrying that bitterness and anger. It becomes a part of my emotions. It becomes a part of my conversation. Matter of fact, I have an ongoing war. Even though I'm going over Reverend so-and-so's church, I'm still talk backbiting him. Never realizing that that backbiting and those phone calls and y'all, how y'all going over high? Yeah, you still go there. Right. Some of y'all better leave the church alone that you left. All right. Because some of you physically left the place, but you haven't left there spiritually. I can't hear you, soldiers. Yeah. So let me go on. So, I was trying to get the young man to ask the Holy Spirit as I'm talking to you tonight. And you that listen to this on YouTube. While you're sitting in your living room. While you're sitting into your tent, wherever you are in the world. I'm asking you in Jesus' name to ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the anointing of God to help you to release people that evidently you couldn't do it by yourself because you're still carrying it. And don't look at me, I'm, I'm a hate. <laughs> you okay? I'm okay, praise God. See, the kind of preaching that I do actually, it zeroes in the stuff. A lot of people come up to me, I don't know what I need prayer for. You can't hear this kind of teaching and not know. Right. You're just going to have to deal with it. Right. Let me help y'all know what you need prayer for, what we're dealing with right now. Yeah. Uh, yes. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, I said to him, I said, son, I said, Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And he gritted his teeth, and that thing started tightening on that leg. He said, I will not. I said, what? Wow. He said, if I forgive my father, I have nothing to fight him with. Mm. Are you sitting out here listening to me in this room? Mm. And the only reason why you're holding on to that unforgiveness and that bitterness that's destroying your emotions, that's tearing your heart and life up, is because you're afraid to give up the battle. It's time. I remember, uh, I'm a historian. I love history. And Chief Joseph of the Nesfet Indian mm. got to a point when he knew that it was time. And he said, I will fight no more forever. And some of us need to find ourselves with some of the people you hold bitterness towards. And some of the people you just won't let stuff go. And then I moved on with their life and you still wondering why God ain't got them. Yeah. We need to find ourselves like Chief Joseph. Mm -hmm. I will fight no more forever. In other words, I've been done wrong. I've been abused. I've been wounded. But I can't carry it any longer. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Yes, and y'all hear me. Yes, if I talked about a Mercedes, if I talked about rich money, we'd just shout and run around the room three times and couldn't make you quiet. Uh -huh. Down. Right. But I'm talking about the bondage in your soul. Yes. You, when you become bound by this type of thing, you're no longer as sweet as where you used to be. Right. The Bible said a merry heart. Do good like a medicine. But I may take to tell you, you've been carrying that wound, hurt, and bitterness simply because of unforgiveness. And your health is being yes. affected. Yes. Now, let me finish the story with that young man. I could not 
passed that demon out. He limped out of the church with that infirmity. Will you limp out tonight with an infirmity that's directly related to your bitterness? Unforgiving. Now how do you know that uh, the frustration, the emotional wound is so deep? What do you say? They get on my nerves. You are doing good. Now we're in America, people across the globe, and I'm going to use one of our major stores as just an example, but you could have put any name on it. You were doing good when you went in Walmarts, and then, oh God, here they come. <laughs> you all say, come on, let's go shopping, pray God, grab the kids, let's go. And then you walk in, and then all of a sudden, the person that you hold, bitterness, unforgiveness, and retaliation shows up, and what you say? Now I'll show you how bound you are. What they doing here? Ah, come on. Are we talking? Yes. You know why you said what we're doing here? Because you so bound, even your reasonable sensibleness have gotten gone. Wow. Why can't they go through Walmart? See? Yes, Father. Somebody in here, you fuss with your mate and get in a constant argument over somebody that that that, that mate done forgot. Ain't even thinking about them. And you, all they got to do is walk in Walmart. And then, what are we arguing about? I can't control where they go. Here they go again. Here she is. Uh-huh. And it is a female with a male. I'm going to go there. I'm, 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 I'm a side oh, Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I hit it dead on the head, didn't we? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Give God a great big hand, praise God. Gotcha. <laughs> it can come from a lesser degree. Listen to this, Minister Jairus. Jairus. It can come from a lesser degree until you're unable to sleep. Because they gotten on your nerves. Mm-hmm. Unable to function because you carrying it on the inside. All of a sudden it can get so deep until that infirmity begins to start chemical reactions in your body. Let's give out a big hand praise. Amen. Look what it says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Let's go there with me. Anybody getting anything out of this? Yes. Amen. And I said it's always the case. No. But some of us know. You that are listening at me at YouTube, you know, sitting in your living room, whether it's you, you know how that, amen, that some folks just being around them makes you sick. Yeah. It's because your soul has been infiltrated. Mm. Your body has joined in. How long does this take? I don't know. All right. Mm-hmm. Does it happen the first time? I don't know. All I know is unforgiveness is sin all day long. Yes, yes. Is. Hatred is sin oh. all day long. Yes. Got that? Yeah. Now how long you can hold it? If all the thing I know, I can tell you the warning signs. It starts controlling your natural sensibility. You start talking crazy. And I tell you the truth, I cannot believe they came out here. Even gets deep in church. I was singing El Praise in it. I know she ain't here. Now your praise was going good and you looked on that knife row and saw who you ate. Does anybody hear me? I'll never forget this pastor. A pastor friend of mine, a powerful girl, woman of God, powerful. Has one of the strongest churches in Dover, Delaware, but she's my buddy. She preached during the time with us and we would do deliverance together sometimes. Good Baptist woman of God, powerful. And I remember her saying to me, she said, I did. She said, let me tell you, brother, about how God delivered me from unforgiveness towards a sister. He said, this, she said, this particular sister in the church, he said, I didn't like her. And I even got spiritual with it. Thought it was God showing me something. And the Bible said, who serves angry with his brother without a cause is in danger of hell fire. But you be mad at folks just looking at them, but then you spiritualize it. I'm moving right along. I'm, I'm, I'm moving right along. Suppose it's not them. Suppose the problem is you. All right. I can't hear you, soldiers. Yeah. So anyway, she kept seeing this sister show up in her revivals. And she said, you know what? She said, I'm getting sick and tired of her showing up everywhere. I don't know what she come to that for because she ain't getting nothing. All of a sudden, God had her to call the woman out. And she prophesied 
just like Jonah. How many of y'all know Jonah hated Ninevites? But he had a powerful revival for him. Don't you let somebody have a revival over top of you and you can't be revived because of your hate, but yet they get the victory past you. Because I'm going to tell you something somebody don't tell you. You know the people you dislike? They're making it despite you. That's yeah. right. Yes. Wait a minute. What? No, 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 no. See, here is what we forget. Can I tell you what we forget? We forget that we've been trifling too. Wow. Yeah. We remember well who did what to yeah. us, but we forget whom we've done yeah. things to. Lord, forgive me for what I've done to other folks. Forgive me when I've hurt others. Forgive me when I've been trifling to others, God. And Lord God, I ask you to forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. Yes. 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 Somebody said, mm-hmm. Yes. So, tonight, this covers a lot of areas, but let me finish my girl says stuff. I said to her, she said to me, she said, and the lady came up to me after service and she said, do you know why I'm, I come to all of your services? And she looked at me, no, I don't know why. And you know how you treat people. You know, you were smiling over here, but time you're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She said, because I love to see God use you. Wow. And she went back home and God whooped her. God tore her up. And God began to minister and show her what she was carrying in her heart. And I'm, and I'm telling you folks, it, in her case, it wasn't an infirmity every day. It was a contamination. It spiritually contaminated her sermon. It contaminated her discernment. Are you understanding me? Yes. Listen to me real good. Amen. That that young man hated his dad so much that he walked out limping, walked out unhealed with a spirit of infirmity that I don't know whether it's gone to this day. Wow. Simply because the demon was looking for a gateway to stay. Wow. And he used unforgiveness. Haven't you ever noticed throughout scripture? Jesus turns around and forgives somebody's sins and they get healed. Yeah. He said, wait a minute, I came to you for healing. Yes, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Say it with me. Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. And the Lord says your sins are forgiven. And then you get healed. Yeah. Well, what does that tell you? There were correlation between the two. That's Give God a big, big hand, praise. Yeah. Go to Psalm 6 and 1. Now, Many deliverance teachers have shared this, and I'm going to add this to my repertoire teaching tonight before we go in prayer. Say it with me again, not. Not. Always. Always. The case. One more time. Not. Not. Always. The case. There have been cases where arthritis has been related to bitterness and unforgiveness. Now, the time somebody has arthritis, they must have bitterness and unforgiveness. That's what made it all unbalanced. Yeah. I command bitterness and unforgiveness to come out of you because you got arthritis. Yeah. Somebody look at somebody and say, stop it. stop it. See, the reason why we do that, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make a couple of deliverance folk mad because I, I do that. Come on, say One of my key things is, here's what I said, I have one clear cut agenda to preach balance, yes. balance deliverance across the nations. That's right. Got that? Yes. So there are people that the reason why the arthritis is operating in the bones is come through the unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. Uh-huh. Your heart attitude affected your bones and marrow. All right. But it's not always the case. See, the reason why we want to use this one shot for all, because you don't want to have to actually hear from God. See? <laughs> Did you get me? Yeah. See, listen to this, Pastor. Somewhere along the line, the church got away from getting filled with the Holy Ghost and getting the gifts of the Spirit. And now they're trying to work, get the gifts of the Spirit. And now they're trying to work this thing without the anointing. Right. And so now they got their little list and think their list is going to do it. Uh, they got the little teacher. Yeah, they hear somebody teach like me. Well, I know right that guy. She's got all three. Ah, oh, come in. Bitterness come out. And ain't got no discernment. Right. Ain't never heard from God. All you got is one sermon with one point and you're running with it. Mm. Yeah, I'm in it. Mm. See what I'm saying? A little bit, little bit, little bit different, ain't it? Ah, oh, to be a ghostbuster and not see a demon around every corner, but definitely get you so you can tell where they are. You cannot do deliverance void of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, void of the discernment of spirit, void of an in-depth understanding of the Word of God, void of holy, righteous living. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
moving right along, children. Somebody say moving right along. Anybody got that? Thank you. Somebody say thank you. So that way you don't run around just doing little stuff. Well, that's this, this, this. No, no, no. If God ain't spoken, what are you doing? Pilot parenting. Psalm 6 1. Oh Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. Oh, heal me, for my bones are vexed. And look what it says here. My bones are vexed. Heal me, Lord, because my bones are vexed. When the bitterness and the unforgiveness gets in the bones, it vexes them. It causes joint trouble. And it's not always the case. But there will be times that the Holy Ghost will speak to you, especially now because you get the teaching. Uh-huh. See what I'm saying? See, classes like this are great because it gives you the working knowledge. Yes. So there are folks, Pastor, there are folks, and it's not everybody, that they became sore vexed. They became so frustrated. They became so wounded. A stronghold gets in and the spirits of infirmity get in their body. And the bones become vexed. This word vex is bahal. And it means to tremble inwardly or to pout, pout, uh, or to, or to uh, uh, suddenly become agitated or inflamed. Got that? Inflamed. So tonight when we begin to pray, some of y'all's joints are going to just loosen up. Some of you, as you release deeper, have you ever seen it? You see that under that anointing? Well, we pray to our sister that has been in many of our services. The anointing of God falls, and as God is healing the deep wounds and healing the hurts, your body start loosening up. All right. <laughs> Can I tell y'all something? And, and you understand this? This is why some people look better dead than they did alive. Mm. <laughs> Because while they were living, they were actively under those strongholds. And their body was in extreme pressure. Now this is not always the case, but I'm trying to show you something. <laughs> now here goes some of the manifestations that can happen to the bone physical frame. Let's say like this. The word palpitate sounds like the heart as well as sudden anxiety. Got that? So the bones can have physical problems. The heart can palpitate. Also, sudden anxiety. Loss of sleep. Got that? Joint aches that just seem to not, to just not seem like they cannot be healed. Now, this is not always the case, but it is in many. Give God a great big hand, please. Look what it says in Psalm 6 3. My soul is also sore vexed. Somebody said the soul becomes sore vexed. Soul. Have you ever had somebody say they vex me? Yeah. They give me a headache. Have you ever had somebody? Listen to this. Y'all gonna love this. I was praying for a pastor in Washington, D.C. And I was doing a teaching in one of those not always the case deals like we do. You know, we're putting a little balance to it, but just bringing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and as we're praying, I look at her, and through a word of knowledge, the Spirit of God said, command the spirit of backbiting to loose her now. Mm. I turn around to her. Now, now you say, now wait a minute. How could it touch the good path? Mm. I'll tell you why. The enemy was able to get a stronghold in there because those who were backbiting her, she loved them so much, they were so dear to her soul until it caused it to be torn, mm. to be wounded. Listen, there are some people, they can run them up all day long, I don't care. And then there are others can say just a few things and break my spirit. Those that I have invested my life in. Those that I took the wall down and let them in. Do you understand me? Now this don't mean put up a wall. Because if you put up a wall, amen, you think you're keeping everybody out. But you, no one can come in and you can't get out. So in her life, because of her love for the people... And it wasn't wrong that she loved people, but her heart was broken. Ministry, there are many pastors, I call them, you know I call some of us wounded warriors who are still working. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got that? And I say this to the pastors in here tonight. Do not be ashamed if God begins to heal you from church wounds from your own ministry. All right. Just get your healing. You know, listen to me real good. 
the worst thing the devil ever done to us was got us to a place that we somehow raised titles above brokenness and transparency. Yes. Yes. Just because we got titles. Titles is our occupation. But Jesus is our Lord. That's right. Oh, I don't lost three people. Give God a big hand, right? Is anybody getting anything out of this? So, so as, as, as the Holy Spirit begins to bring healing, as the Holy Spirit begins to bring deliverance in these areas, you will find out that those wounds that, that, that have gone to our bones and to our bodies can be healed. The anxiety can be healed. Uh, when you got a broken heart, when you've been wounded in relationships, there's a wall that's up. Yeah. The fear of trusting. Got that? Yeah. You react. Listen, let's, let's go a little bit further. Somebody say, give God a great big hand, praise. Go to Proverbs 17, 22. 2003, I had colon cancer in 2003. That's right. I was attacked in my body with colon cancer. And I use everything that I'm teaching you. I checked my life out for sin. I checked my life out for different things I was doing dietary. I checked my life out every way I could, and at the end of the day, I, yes, I'd rather with you the checklist and rely on the king, because remember what I told y'all last night? In case anything breaks, return it to the manufacturer. Yeah. 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 But listen at this. When the doctor came to me from the cancer center, mm-hmm. and he spent one day with me, he looked at me, he said, you know what? I said, yes, sir. He said, you'll be okay. He said, over half of your healing is started already. I said, and I laughed at him. I said, man, what you talking about? He said, your heart is merry. Mm. He said, the infirmity. He said, in all my years of practice, I found those who come in who feel that cancer has got them and they done now. Because after all, you got cancer. The C word. You get real reverent with it, like it's some holy sanctified yeah, thing. Yeah. Got that? He said, when they come in with that hopeless and despair, often the treatment does not work. He said, but your faith. And he didn't say your faith have made you whole. But when he was talking, I said, the merry heart do a good like a medicine. But look, I love this, y'all. Y'all will love this. About the second or third day, and for my experience, I ended up taking chemo. That was my experience. Uh-huh. You may go organic or whatever. You can name 10,000 things of the way you would go, but today I'm still standing here preaching. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you get it? So, however, the Holy... Matter of fact, uh, there's a uh, manual that we almost give away. Uh, it's, it talks about uh, deliverance from the spirit of cancer. And in it, I share uh, the experience of what I went through with cancer. And I got one section, and it's not even a long book. It's two tapes that I talk about cancer. And here was what I said in there, Pastor. Watch this. I said, excuse me, may I have y'all's permission to be sick? Now, you said, well, wait a minute. What did you mean when you said that? My church was so afraid of me going through sickness that they, they would not allow me to take the time to be healed. Ah, come on, come on. And I had to literally tell them, look, I am sick. I need healing. I am claiming my healing. I am dealing. I need you to back off and let me go through the process. But you were so much, you wanted me healed so much so you could feel good. I want me healed because I, God, is a healer. Give God a great big hand, right? And so I had to tell folk, you know, listen, excuse me, I need time. Well, you don't act the way you do. I said, I'm not going to. I, I, I need time to heal. Why is it when the pulpit gets sick, it's a whole different thing than when you do? Right. Yes. Great spiritual giants in the pews came to me about the fact that I was needed to heal, but simply they were the same ones that filled my line just as soon as I got better. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, y'all are looking at me strange. 
brother, did you claim that sickness? No, I didn't claim that sickness. I claimed my healing, but I just needed saints to back up and let me be healed. <laughs> and that was in 2003. And baby doll, I'm 100% cancer free. You hear me? 100%. By the way, I had colon cancer. Stage 2, moving on to 3. And here I stand. They took out 14 inches of my colon. And here I stand. And I'm not on a colostomy bag. And here I stand. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? But, but listen to this. You will love this. I'm still dealing with the healing. They had this little girl. I call her a little girl. Everybody looks like children to me now, son. This little girl comes in, bless her heart. And she's with the, with the division of the hospital that, that they, they come to check on you and see how you're handling the cancer. <laughs> So a little girl come in. I seen her friend uh, with her little tablet. She says, how you doing, Mr. Hopkins? I said, I'm all right, baby girl. So that's what I call them affectionately, baby girl, because they look like babies and girls to me. And I said, I'm all right, baby girl. And she said, how are you doing? How are you dealing with your cancer? I said, baby girl, all men die. I plan to live. <laughs> And when I finished talking to her, she said, can I ask you something? I said, yeah. Would you talk to the other patients? I said, that's finished, Jake Gladly. <laughs> but Proverbs 17, 22 was still inside of me. A merry heart. Yes. The condition of my heart do of good like a medicine. But a broken spirit will dry up my bones. It will cause my bones and my joints to become seized and bound. Oh, are you seeing it? Now this, let me read this verse in the modern language Bible. Because I'm a King James boy, okay? Modern language, a cheerful heart makes a good cure. But a broken spirit makes the bones dry up. It didn't mean that. It couldn't, brother. That, that verse didn't mean that, did it? It couldn't have meant what it said. Oh, yes, it did. Let's read it in the Revised, revised Standard Version. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. So can you imagine you needing a healing, you needing a breakthrough, and you walking around mad, grumpy, evil, cantankerous, wow. bitty, bitter, Hateful, can't stand this one, can't stand that one. Matter of fact, people like that, I'll be honest with you. I kind of don't like being around them. I mean, that's right. They, almost, that, that, that hate comes in them and you can smell it. Yes. I, you know, I wonder if some people really understand, even something that comes in my prayer line, the hate in you sometimes is so strong that you go like, you want to break through from God, but honey, if you would just go back and quit being so doggone mean to your family. That's uh -huh. it right here. Yeah, nobody in here like that, see? 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 Somebody say, see? Yes. Now listen at this, Pastor. The word bones is etsum. E-S-E-T-S-E-M. Etsum or A-T-S-A-M. Etsam. And guess what the word bones means? Listen. Listen. The word etsum, bones, means the substance or self. What? The bones, Epson, is the substance or self to bind fast and to be powerful. Now you can run this in the Greek. Use a Greek lexicon, strong exhaustive concordance. Run it yourself. So if my bones, listen to this Kelly, if my bones is the substance of self, what happens to self in the soul will affect the substance of the bones mm. down to the marrow. Wow. Just like the word of God is quick and powerful and is a discerner of the intents of the heart and even goes to the bone and the marrow. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. The intent of my heart goes to my bones and marrow. Oh, help me Jesus. I'm going to give you a moment called Selah. Pause. And think on this. Now once again, this brother's supposed to be talking about demons. I am. But what this brother is telling you, I'm showing you gates of entry. And it ain't complicated. Give God a great big hand praise. Now here goes another curious one I had. In a few minutes we're going to start our prayer. 
Watch this. In Delaware, we had the first black judge of our state that was a member of my church. Uncle Bob was something else. Love God. His wife, beautiful. Beautiful lady, sweetheart, our ah, sweetheart. She came up to me and we're having a mass deliverance. Now, Uncle Bob, now you gotta understand, you're talking about the largest black judge in our region going to our church, going through deliverance like everybody else. Got that? Getting prayer, getting devils busted, getting strongholds broken off of life. The one stronghold we had to deal with in his life was because his wife was light skinned and he was dark skinned, he wasn't good enough for their bound, her bound up family. And y'all got quiet in Jersey. <laughs> So therefore, on their marriage, their family's ill will, they never got the blessing from the family. And uh, because it broke his wife's heart, it kept affecting them. Now they didn't fight or fuss or argue or separate, but it kept her at a place where she just couldn't fully be happy. See, sometimes you have to shake your family if they can't get along with God's program. Look, I'm interracially married and I love my mommy and I love Evan's mommy and them. I love all of them. But guess what? For 36 years, whether they liked it or not, that's my wife, that's my boo, that's my baby. All right. And by the way, if you have trouble with interracial marriage, tough. Get over it. You'll be fine. Then ask you whether you believe it or not. Don't care. Brother Radical, ain't he? No. It's just that the bottom line is we take on too much from people outside of our perimeter rather than allowing God to build. Because if you can't love any, everybody, guess what? Your validation I wouldn't need anyhow. Because I'm trying to love the whole wide world. For God so loved him that he gave his only begotten son. Give God a big, big hand praise. What any? That being said, let me move on to the other part. So we're praying, and remember, the pain and the grief she went through from her family. Oh, no matter how successful that man was, wasn't good enough, because his skin was dark, and hers was lighter. Got that? You see how dumb demons are? Right. Sitting around hating on people because of the color of her skin. Mm-hmm. Well, we were ministering. And she came up now. She wore glasses, so it didn't take a genius to realize her eyes might have needed healing. Or so be it, all right? She said to me, she said, Brother Harper, she took her glasses off and she said, Could you pray for my eyes? I'm having a lot more trouble with them. I'm thinking, now, I, I know that you, sometimes you're just, you're just not a rocket scientist. You just don't get it. God just doesn't speak. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. So I said, Well, I'm going to pray for her. Now, I was praying, Lord. Yeah, I, you, you ever ran back and get one of them? Lord! Heal her eyes. Touch in Jesus' name. All of a sudden, she started manifesting. Head started shaking, and a clear, sticky, syrup, syrupy type of And it wasn't tears, it was gooey. Started coming out of her eyes. And the Spirit of God said, Now command the spirit of grief to fully come out of there. I was like, Mm, now, 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 this weird. Because this stuff is coming down her face, and we're touching it, and it's sticky. So we get her towel away from her eyes. I said, He said, Come on, the spirit of grief to come out. It's like, Hey, dummy, do it. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I command grief come out of her eyes now. And more. And more. And she started going, It's clearer. I said, Let her go, grief now. And all of a sudden, she, her eyes became completely clear. She could see completely clear. Well, when all, when all that happened, I went home going, I can't believe it. Now I knew you went there. God moved. You ever have God move and you go like, you ever had to sit on the edge of your bed one night after a service? I sat on the edge of my bed. I'm a student of the word, okay? I'm actually a trained seminarian. Now I might not look like it here. I'm chancellor of a university. From the West Coast, 11 years strong. Okay? We have satellite campuses all over America. Got that? So anyway, I wanted to find biblical proof that this was a text. I wanted text proof, not just an experience that happened in a right, service. Right, right. So I said, Lord, if this is really you, then it's in the Bible. And God said, good. Get up. Study. 
Song 6, get it. Please. Song chapter 6. And here's what happened to her. When you get it, say amen. amen. Now see what, now, now, now listen to this. See, Apostle Tauber, what people want is just hear me for getting on me doing anything. Right. But what you that are, you that are ministers in here, you need to be trained how to extract from Scripture the weapons of our warfare. Uh, That's right. See, when you read that verse, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. And then you, if I would say to you, give me a list of the weapons, you would probably go to the armor of Ephesians 6, so that's easy. But there are weapons of our warfare that are all throughout Scripture, Scriptures that break strongholds, Scriptures that identify strongholds, Scriptures that validate the way God's going to move. Yes. Right. See, once you start looking in the light of that revelation, your understanding will open up and the anointing of your prayer. This is why, I'm going to say this before I go to your Psalm 6. This is why when Jesus got up and read Isaiah 61 and Mark chapter 1, yes. the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, they said, he spake as one that had authority and not as a scribe. Why? Because he spoke in the life and authority of that scripture. He made it come alive. Not just read a verse. The scribes polyparented, even in their writing, from memory, all those verses, Jesus gave them life. And devils recognized it. The more you begin to go in and see the cutting edge grace that God has put on these scriptures. And, the, and the, listen, you remember, listen at this woman of God. And the book of Psalms talks about execute upon them the judgments written. What's that talking about? To execute upon them the judgments written, that's the weapons of your warfare. Right. The weapons of your warfare is to execute upon them the judgments that are written, and the judgments that are written that you execute upon them are in Scripture. Uh-huh. I call it Scripture warfare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Move right on. All right, ready? So when I ask God what happened to, to this woman, Psalm 6, verse 6, I am weary of my groaning. All the night make I... make. I water my couch with tears. All the night make I water my couch with tears. Look at what it says here. Mine eye is consumed because of what? Say it, soldier. My eye is consumed of grief and it waxes old because of all my enemies. So the grief, and somebody say, not Not always always the the case. The grief of David's enemies caused his eyes to cry all night and his eyes begin to age to wax old because of his grief and his enemy her eyes for whatever reason became affected by all the pain that was behind him the eyes the gateway to the soul this is why many times when people come in our life Carolina, we look at people, you can see the pain in them. Right. I'm going to work with this scripture a little bit, boy. I'm going to share something with y'all. The grace of God on my life, because I have an anointing to heal hurting people, sometimes when I'm out in the public, it is so bearable, it breaks my heart. I've had waitresses wait on me, and I've grabbed the little girl's hand and said, baby, look at me. God's going to change that situation with that child of yours. Mm. Don't give up. You understand? And they tell me, look, how did you know? How did you know that? I said, because I can see the pain. I said, hold my hand. I said, do you feel that? And they go like, it's lifting. I said, I know. I said, go ahead now, sweetheart. Do you understand? The anointing of God. To heal the wounded in the broken places. A song first in the book of Corinthians 14, I think it was, it talks about speaking in tongues with interpretation of tongues and one coming out that does not know and then all of a sudden they hear and you interpret it in the regular language and that regular language tells them the secret of their heart and then they know of an assurity that God of a truth is among you. The church needs to move in an anointing yeah. like that. Yeah. It moves and needs to move in an anointing that when they're sitting in the presence of you, they know they're set in the presence yes. of something yes. that God dwells. Is it about here it is? Yes. Now listen here. David was under so much grief and sorrow by his enemies that he was groaning and crying all night long. Weary with my groaning means to be exhausted and weakened because of grief. The living 
Living Bible it reads like, like this. I am worn out with the pain. Every night my pillow is wet with my tears. Got that? Verse 6. And my eye is consumed because of grief and it waxes old. Listen at the modern language. Listen at the modern language. Let's see, watch this, Pastor. The modern language Bible says this about Psalm 6 7. My eye has grown dim from grief. What? Wait a minute. My eye just cry. No. My eye has grown dim. My vision is affected her vision was affected because of her grief it is aging it is acting as if I'm an old person it is aging because of my enemies so much grief has hit me until it caused me to age my body don't feel right no more because of the brokenness in the womb. This is why we must see. Did you notice in Luke 4, 18, it talks about mending the brokenhearted and doing the heavy burden. Yes. Two areas, broken heart and heavy burden. Mm -hmm. Two areas of emotional pain. Two areas of life circumstances. And let the oppressed go free and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Because I'm almost done. I'm almost done. How many are getting this? Yes. I'm going to read this in the Living Bible. Uh, when I get ready to pray, my sister, Brother Jairus, is one of the soldiers that I'm training, one of my sons in the gospel. I want them, him and Kelly to be able to come up. Kelly, if you're in, in the mood, you can come up with us, baby. All right? Amen. Listen to what it says here. My eye, Living Bible, my eye is growing old and dim with grief. It grows weak because of my enemies. That's the Living Bible, Pastor. Listen at the Revised Standard Bible. My eye wasted away. My eyes, my vision, my seeing wasted away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. I've had so much stuff, so much trouble coming against me until my eyes could take it no more. And when God showed me that, the book back there, it's called Deliverance from Damaged Emotions. It's that book back there. I wrote that book from People's Deliverance. As I talk a little bit more, where's my little stool at? And kick, kick back in a second. As I talk a little bit more, amen. As I was writing that book, I began to deal with issues and begin to see issues in people's lives where they were the pain and hurt. As some of you sitting in here, where the pain and hurt inside of them, where they needed to ask God to move it and to take it away and bring healing to you. No, no, every sickness some of you got is not some demon and some spirit of infirmity. It's not always the case. I would be a liar and an incorrect teacher if I told you that. But some of you, even looking at me at YouTube, listening to me at this tape, some of you, that's what's happened to you. You're sick. You're sick because of an infirmity that has entered in the damage and the emotions. There is. Bring up y'all come up, soldiers. And tonight we want to pray. And ask the Father to bring you here. Oh, you just said, man of God, could you swing the camera? Come over here for me, buddy, and put it right back on me. You're good, all right? Just stay right in the worshipful place where you are. God, we thank you. God, we praise your holy name. Lord, we give you honor. I don't mind you taking me, man of God. I don't mind you doing it. Hallelujah. Tonight, listen. Sometimes people come to me and almost say, well, look at me and tell me what they call Come on, come on, come on. People, don't do that to yourself. Lie. Don't do that to yourself. You know what? You know right then from what I hear. You know that I hate you. You know it. Don't play games. What do you want to play for? I don't know. Whatever. What are you doing? God wants to heal you. You, you, you know that you can't stand your daughter-in-law. You know whether you're still holding stuff on your baby daddy. You know whether you're carrying this stuff over a past relationship with woman children's father, your own parents. It's time to ask the Holy Spirit to help you with it. I know of one young man. I love him. He's mad with me right now. So maybe he won't talk to him. Because I had to end up telling him, I can't help you. Now you see somebody say, what? You're not supposed to tell people that. You can do all things through Christ. I can, but I need his cooperation. Right. That's right. Yes. And all he wanted was revenge mm. on his oppressors. 
He wanted God to somehow make hurt and destroy those who had hurt him. And that's not in his hands to decide. It's not in your hands to decide what God will do to someone that done something to you. The only thing that's in your hands is what you're going to do for what's been done to you. Tonight, as we go before the Father. Now here goes some of the things that can happen as we're praying. So once again, I am not going to prove nothing to you. Right, right. You're not going to put this in my hands. No, 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 no. We are not. We're not going to prove how much I pray and Jerry so I'm not doing it with you. Because I have to know the grace is here. Y'all know the anointing is here. Yes. It's calm. It's calm. It's sweet. What we're going to do is go before the Father. And you want to out, out, out the Holy Spirit. Now, some of you, as you're going to be beginning to pray, all you're going to do is just keep, keep cool with me, brother. You're good. Just keep it sweet. You're good. You ain't nothing wrong. You ain't nothing wrong. Just stay with me. Just stay with me. As we begin to pray, as we begin to let the Holy Spirit minister to you, I mean, don't worry about me running back there to you. Don't worry about me doing something. Now, some of you are going to begin to weep before the Lord. Let it happen. Some of you, the anointing already is starting. Look at you. You feel it, don't you? Hallelujah. If you want to pray with me, some of you, you're going to just feel a change. Got it? Some of you, amen, is just going to pray. Well, brother, I need that, that, this curse, that curse. Let God do what he's doing right now. Yes, yes. We hope we pre and we pre God until you come almost acting like you're going to do You're not going to. It's for his means led by the Spirit of God. Not by our own idea. I know you might want this or that touch, but God is doing this. Yes. You hear me? You ever go to the doctor and you stop for one thing and he turns around and says, Look, sweetheart, uh, I know you're trying to bring your blood pressure down, but right now I found that you've got a blockage in the left ventricle of your heart. Now, what do you want to do? Pills for blood pressure or deal with the heart? Hello. Let the surgeon do his work. Pray me, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your tender mercy. I thank you for your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the message tonight. And I ask, Father, that the Holy Spirit would move upon this prayer, would break yokes in my life, and in the life of others. In the name of Jesus, I got a confession to make, Lord. I have held onto wounds, hurts, and bitterness. And they've been hard for me to let go. In the name of Jesus, there are people that have been in my life betrayed me and wounded me. And Father, I need your grace. I need your anointing to help me to let them go. Lord Jesus, they've been in my conversation too long. They've been in my thoughts too long. Break the evil soul tie meaning the emotional bondage the emotional wound the emotional damage that has happened to my life due to that relationship in the name of Jesus I have trouble letting it go letting them go although they may not be in my personal life daily they still hold a place in my emotions in my soulless realm and I need your Holy Spirit to help me Lord Jesus to release tell the Lord the name help me to release the best way tell him the name tell him the name of it that's right talk to him in the name of Jesus that's right they get on your nerves can't stand it when they come around that one. Stuff. I have a hard time. I, I, when I get around them and everything, come on. Yeah, that one. 
I need, come on, come on. Could be a church member. Could be a former pastor. Could be a, a leader in your life. Could be family members. Mom and them. Your sisters, your brothers. It could be an old past relationship. A broken marriage. A separation. That's right, come on. A boss. A, a person that works on your job. Come on, come on. Another church member. A number of people. A number of people. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I need your Holy Spirit. I welcome it into my life, into this area of my heart, to help me to release them. Forgiving them, Father, is not holding them countless of their actions. But I forgive them, Lord, as an act of faith. Because you forgave me the many things I have done. In the name of Jesus, I don't want this in my heart. I don't want this in my life any longer. In the name of Jesus, I welcome the Holy Spirit to go in areas of my life where other spirits have entered in and manipulated and kept the hurt and kept the anger and kept the frustration and kept the issues and kept the memory and kept the faults and kept the anger and kept it going. I welcome the Holy Spirit to move out any demons, any struggles, any emotional wounds connected with this bondage. In the name of Jesus, and I command you to release me now. In the name of Jesus. Over the entire audience, God, I begin to pray. That's right. Many will yarn. Some will yarn. Some will just breathe. Some will cry. Some will weep. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. All three audiences, I command them to go down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I command infirmities and sicknesses in the body that's coming through hurts and wounds by the power of the blood of Jesus. Come on. I pray for leaders. I pray for those in here. I pray. Come on. Go down in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Come on. Loose down in Jesus' name. The inability to let it go. Come on. Out of there now. Come on. Go. That's it. That's it. Come on. All of those deep wounds, all of those deep hurts, we command them to go. Walk aside. In Jesus' name. Every area. In Jesus' name. Issues from church and family and life and pressures. We just ask your Father to bring healing to them now. So many things, God. Coming about with so much ungrateful saints, ungrateful people, church hurts and church wounds. We command in the name of old sin, in the night, in the day, young, in the old sin, in the come on. All of the pain inside of this sweet pastor, I command you to go now by the power. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Betrayal and broken heartedness go in the name of Jesus. Folks walking over your heart and over your feelings go. Folks, where you've done nothing but good, but you received the tax. I commanded to loose your pastor. Come on. All of the wounds, all of the pain. Come on, my side. Come on. Come on, loose that in Jesus. Come on. All of the mobile. Come on. All through this audience. Go. Breathe them out there. Come on. All of the hurt in there. Come on. All the pain in your pastor. I command it to go. Come on, come on. Years of ministry. Years of ministry. Years of ministry. Carrying those burdens. But yet you pressed on. Yet you pressed on. Father, heal. Heal, oh God. I saved and ministered to others and my family's been under attack. I ministered to others and I received attacks and wounds out of all that I've done. Let your anointing God heal. Come on. 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 That's it. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. On the name of you, all those weights and burdens you carry, woman of God. Loose. And God heal. Come on. I command your health to be released. I command your body to be released. Now, by the power of the blood of Jesus. Come on, come on. All the anointing is doing it. God, we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every area. By the power of the blood, loose down. By the power of the blood, loose down. In Jesus' name. And God, I thank you. God, I give you praise. 